Every year in April, American Mahjong players eagerly await the release of the National Mahjong League card, and that time is upon us. In this video, I'm going to share my analysis and findings on the new card. I'm also going to share some tips for a smooth transition. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. I'm going to share my analysis and findings in the form of a presentation. If you have any questions along the way, write them in the comments section below. Let's get to the analysis. The National Mahjong League publishes their annual card of valid hands for American Mahjong in April. Many people got their card early this year, including me. The rules of the game rarely change. The National Mahjong League will clarify, modify, or create rules which are announced in the annual bulletin. Most of these changes are published in Mahjong Media Z which can be published on the National Mahjong League website. The methods used to describe the hands, the colors, letters, numbers, and the format stay the same. The categories of hands typically stay the same. This year, they gave us another surprise. The changes are in the shapes and patterns of the hands. Here are statistics and findings that may give you an insight into the nuances of this year's card. I'll also share tips for a smooth transition. We're going to start with statistics. The next five slides will have tables of hand counts and we're going to look at both percentages and numbers of hands. We're gonna go through all the statistics and then we're gonna dig into findings afterwards. The hand count includes line level variations. For example, quint number three has two options, so it's counted as two hands. The first table is an analysis by category. This is in descending order under count for this year. The top of the list, Odds, 13 hands. Consecutive run, 10. Wins and dragons, 9. 3, 6, 9, 8. Evens, 8. Singles and pairs, 7. Quince, 5. Year, 4. Like numbers, 3. Math play, 0. That's the surprise. No addition or multiplication hands. This table is an analysis by value. This is in descending order by hand count based on the value. 25 point hands, which are the easiest. We have 44 hands. 30 point hands, which are concealed, seven. 50 point hands under singles and pairs, we have six. 30 point hands that are open, we have four. 45 point hands under quince, four. 40 point hands under quince, one. 75 point hands in singles and pairs, one. 35 point hands that are concealed, zero. 85 point hands under singles and pairs, zero. 
this table is an analysis by attribute. There are many attributes that impact decision making. The list is lengthy and dispersed. These are the attributes that are predominant this year. At the top of the list, the number of hands with Pungs, Kongs, and Quints, 57. Number of hands with pairs, 48. Number of hands in mixed suits, including dragons, 40. Number of hands with flowers, 27. Number of hands with like numbers, 26. Number of hands with pairs of flowers, 20. Number of hands in one suit, and this includes number tiles with or without dragons, excluding winds, 18. Number of hands with dragons, 18. Number of hands with winds, 13. This table is an analysis by attribute for purposes of comparison between years. I found these to be noteworthy. There are two additional win hands this year. There are six more hands with pairs this year. There are four fewer hands in one suit number tiles with or without dragons, excluding winds. There are three fewer hands with like numbers. There are three fewer hands with Kongs of flowers. And there's an equal number of hands with quints of flowers. This is an analysis by recurring and prevalent shapes. The hand count represented here are where the counts are greater than 4%. The top two have an equal count. The first shape is pair, pung, kong, pung, pair. Some people call this a pyramid. Some call it a bell curve. The shape with equal hand count is Pung Kong, Pung Kong, followed very closely by Pear, Kong, Kong, Kong. So these are the three prevalent shapes on the card. Pyramid, Pung Kong, Pung Kong, Pear, Triple Kong. Let's talk about hand value. This is a relatively easy card because 66% of the hands are 25 points. That's six more than last year. So I predict shorter games overall. Carryover hands. These are hands that were on the old card and they're on the new card. For 2021, the carryover hands are evens number six, two, four, six, eight, Kong, Kong, Kong pair. Wins number one, news, big multiples, Kong, Pung, Pung, Kong. Wins number six, two options, pair of flowers, North and South with the year, East and West with the year. 369 number six, two options, pair, 369 Kongs in one suit and mixed suits. Let's talk about the significant percentages. 85% of the hands have Pungs, Kongs, and Quints. Every year that I've been doing analysis on the National Mahjong League card, the percentage of big multiples, Pungs, Kongs, and Quints, have always been 80% or higher. This is why I say that American Mahjong is a game of multiples. 
not so much singles and pairs, but pungs, kongs, and quints. This is why you want to build around multiples because 85% of the hands on the card for this year have pungs, kongs, and quints. Gather supporting tiles for those multiples to optimize your potential to win. 72% of the hands have pairs. That's six more than last year. 60% of the hands have mixed suits with or without dragons. If you are in mixed suits, hold opposite dragons. The term opposite dragons applies to a hand when you have number tiles with two blocks of dragons. The dragons correspond to the other two suits. 40% of the hands have flowers. Every category on the card has two or more hands with flowers, except for quince. 39% of the hands have like numbers. Last year, 45% of the hands had like numbers. We're down by three hands this year. But passing like numbers is almost as risky as passing a pair. If I know what hand I'm playing, I have no gaps and three or fewer discards during the second Charleston, I might pass like numbers. It doesn't happen very often. 27% of the hands use dragons. This is comparatively higher than hands with wins. Pass wins before passing dragons. And when passing either of these tiles, pass one at a time of each. 19% of the hands are in odds. Even though odds has a higher number of hands, consecutive run has far greater flexibility. So it's a much more powerful category. Noteworthy patterns. There are no knitted hands on the card. A knitted hand is when you have number tiles in mixed suits where the first block and the third block are one suit, the second and fourth block are the second suit, and the fourth block is the matching dragon for that second block. That's called knitted. There are no hands like that on the card this year. Math play is off the card entirely. Last year, we didn't have a math play category, but they tucked multiplication hands in evens and odds. This year, they're off the card entirely. Noteworthy shapes. There are 28 shapes on the card. That's two more than last year but they are more dispersed. Check the blocks on the card before you claim a discard for an exposure. And if you are not exposed yet, verify your winning hand against the card before you declare Mahjong. It's best to train yourself to say, wait, and then look at the card, make sure it's right, and then say Mahjong. Pyramid hands and Pung Kong Pung Kong are equally represented at seven each. Pair Triple Kong is a close second. Quince of flowers outside the category are in two hands, consecutive run number four and three, six, nine, number four. If you play quince, secure your pairs before claiming a discard for an exposure and also consider working with number tiles greater than two. And that applies to the consecutive run category as well. The primary reason for that is because this is 2021 and there are two twos in the year block for any of those hands. 
and the singles and pairs hands has three year blocks. This leads into hot commodities. First, let's talk about flowers. There's one less hand with flowers compared to last year, but there are five with Kongs, three with quints. Flowers will be hot. Year tiles. Passing year tiles is risky business. If you must pass these tiles, pass one at a time and pass white dragons as a last resort. If you are not playing a year hand or evens, consider avoiding ones and twos, especially where there are pairs of those numbers. Use of twos can impact these categories. Quince has two consecutive hands with pairs. Two and number four. If you do not have twos in your hand already, consider starting your consecutive run at three. That applies to the consecutive run category as well, except for the first two option hand. Singles and pairs, hands three and four could be affected by twos. The third hand down, if you are playing singles and pairs number three, consider starting your sequence at three. And if you do not have twos in your hand for singles and pairs number four, consider not playing that hand. <laughs> Play a hand where you can use jokers under the 2468 category instead if you're light on twos. For like numbers and winds and dragons number two, which is east and west with evens, consider not using twos. Evens, when you're playing evens, Obtaining twos will be challenging for all the hands. Be mindful of twos both on the table and absent from the table when playing a hand with singles and pairs of twos. Dragons. There's an increase in hands with dragons, two more than last year at 27%. Dragons will be a hot commodity because of year tiles, and there is one or more hands with dragons in every category except quince. Like numbers in singles and pairs have one dragon hand. Evens, odds, and 369 have two dragon hands. The year and wins in dragons have four. News. There are six hands. three with big multiples, three with singles. If you pass wins, pass one at a time. Fatal errors. There's only one. Kongs of twos with a Kong of white dragons. Year number three. There are single tiles needed to complete that hand a two and a one. So if you have a Kong of twos and then a Kong of zeros and that Kong of twos is a pure Kong, you're in trouble because you need to have a natural two for the two one. So you're gonna need a joker for that hand and save one of the twos for your natural two one. Potentially problematic parentheticals. Evens number eight and singles and pairs number four say like pungs or pairs respectively must be the same, but they can be either twos, fours, sixes, or eights. Wins in dragons. 
similar situation, any like odd or even. North and south go with odds, or east and west go with evens. You choose which number to use, but they must be the same, and each suit must be represented. Consecutive run number five. Due to real estate on the card, there is no room to say any three consecutive numbers besides the first hand where there are two options. All the other hands in this category can start with any number as long as the sequence ends in nine. Even if it does not say any fill in the blank consecutive numbers, the first hand with two options, one through five and five through nine, in the parentheses, the text says these numbers only, but all the others in that category, the sequence can start with any number as long as it ends in nine. Consecutive run number eight, the text in the parentheses says any two consec knows with op dragons. In other words, any two consecutive numbers with opposite dragons. Since the two consecutive numbers would be one suit, the dragons need to represent the other two suits. That's what opposite dragons means. So you have a numbered suit represented, then the other two suits need to be represented through the dragons. For example, we could have a pair of flowers, one, two in dots, then a pung of green dragons and a pung of red dragons. That would be consecutive numbers with opposite dragons. Let's talk about tandem categories. These are categories that share tiles, which allow playability to a certain point in time. Eventually you have to make a decision. So you can play multiple categories. Some play well together and some do not. The year tandems well with evens and like numbers if you're using twos. Evens to consecutive run. If you fill in the evens to make a consecutive run. For example, if you're playing the second hand under two, four, six, eight, and you get a three and a five, you could potentially switch to consecutive run because then you have two, three, four, five. Like numbers can tandem with any category on the card because there are like numbers in every category on the card. Quince to consecutive run and like numbers. Consecutive run to evens and odds with omissions. So for example, if you're playing consecutive run number three, one, two, three, four, and you end up with sixes and eights, you could switch to two, four, six, eight. You would just have to discard the one and three. Odds to like numbers and consecutive run with fillers. The same concept with evens applies to odds, where if you're playing one, three, five, and you draw twos and fours, you can switch to one through five consecutive run because the tiles filled in. Winds and dragons to the year and like numbers. The tandem with winds and dragons to like numbers applies to the second hand down, either north and south with odds or east and west with evens. 
if you build up your number tiles as opposed to the wins, you could switch to like numbers using those number tiles. 369 to odds using threes and nines. Singles and pairs, tandems with every category on the card except quints because singles and pairs have onesie twosies and quince, even though two of those hands have pairs, you're gonna need big multiples. So the transition from singles and pairs to quince is a stretch. These are the top three mistakes players make when transitioning to a new card. One, passing risky tiles in the Charleston no matter what year it is, flowers, dragons, and year tiles are risky. Hold them or pass them individually to mitigate risk. Two, claiming a discard for an exposure on a concealed hand. Always check for the X or C before you claim your first discard. Three, playing a hand from the previous year. Always check the shape before you claim your first discard. Here are tips for a smooth transition. If you have a set of tiles at home, do hands-on exercises. Category modeling is when you create every hand on the card category by category. Be sure to read the text in the parentheses for flexibility and limitations. Charleston modeling. Take 13 or 14 random tiles, then create a mock Charleston by lining up six rows of three tiles each. Practice making decisions on those incoming passes. If you're left with four discards or less, at the end of the Charleston, I would call that a success. Charleston chain reaction. The setup is the same as Charleston modeling, but this time use your camera to take photos as you make decisions with incoming passes. When you first get the drawn tiles, choose the category that you think has the greatest potential and then make note of other options. Go through the Charleston, taking photos along the way. At the end of the first iteration, note the category that you played, the hands you considered, and the hand you ended up with if you did end up picking a hand towards the end, and the number of discards. Then, using the photos, recreate your dealt hand and the Charleston passes go through the Charleston with the other options you noted at the beginning of the exercise. Compare the results to see if your instincts were right. Charleston sprints. The setup is the same as Charleston modeling, but this time use a stopwatch to time your decisions through the Charleston. Do three sprints and take an average of your time. For novice players, your average should be under four minutes. For intermediate players, your average should be under three minutes. For advanced players, your average should be under two minutes. Push yourself to make decisions in under two minutes or less because quick decision-making is appreciated by most players. And in many cases, it's required if you play online. Charleston Force. The setup is the same as Charleston modeling, but this time create a strip of paper for every category on the card. Mix up the strips, then pick three random categories. Do the Charleston modeling exercise and force yourself to make hands in the pre-selected categories. Solitaire. This is where you play four hands at one time to practice decision-making in a full game. 
You have to be able to compartmentalize your decision making. Otherwise, you could skew the outcome. But if you can do that, there's much that can be learned in a game of solitaire. Play live often when it's safe. Play with peers to relax and have fun. Play with advanced players to learn by observation. Play online between games. In my opinion, Mahjong Time is the best place to play online. They have a very realistic interface and they also offer marathons, which is where you play four hands in a row at the same table with the same players and they have tournaments. If you have not played at Mahjong Time yet, look for my email in the video description below. Send me an email and I can send you information about their VIP trial. You could also watch my videos on YouTube. I have an American Mahjong lesson strategy playlist and a playlist called Strategy Theory. I also do recurring skill builders. Any video with a red, white, and blue thumbnail will be for American Mahjong. Here are some Facebook groups that I highly recommend if you're looking for entertainment and the support of peers. Mahjong, that's it. This is the largest online community for Mahjong players. Siamese Mahjong Guild. This is if you like playing two hands at one time with one opponent. Mahjong Community. The name speaks for itself. It's all about community. This is my Facebook group. I hope you found this analysis helpful and that the findings put you on a short learning curve. If you have any questions about the content, please write your questions in the video description below. Also take a minute to read the video description itself because there are links in there that you might enjoy. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do, that way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.